Everything that exists exhibits an aesthetic quality and is therefore a work of art, from a painting to a crystal to a rose. Most people think of art as something produced exclusively by a human, but in actuality everything in nature is a work of art. Art does not need a human agent to create, but it is the result of the application of natural principles and processes independent of human agencies. When we think of art, we usually think of static creations in a set form. Once you do a painting, the painting is done and you put it in a frame. This type of art is very different from the flower. It is in a whole other category. Think of a yellow rose in full bloom in a rose garden. This is a living work of natural art. If we look carefully at the rose, it arouses particular sensations and we call it beautiful. But what makes the rose beautiful? Is it the form? Why is the form beautiful? If we look at it carefully, it seems to be organic, yet it has a number of petals that indicate an underlying mathematical structure to its form. Tomorrow it will look different. It might start to lose some of its petals. Now imagine that a human picks the yellow rose, cuts off a few leaves and places it into a tall blue bottle and sets it on an indoor coffee table. The rose is now part of an interior human habitat. Without the rose, the table looks bare and lifeless, but with the rose, the room lights up. If the rose is placed in a different bottle, it would create a different effect and sensation. This example shows how one minor artistic effect taking an element out of context and placing it with another element, enhances the entire environment and the sensibility that enters that environment. It changes the energy. These are subtle points to illustrate the interplay of natural art, the intentional human element, perceptions and the domestic environment. This is referred to as Dharma art, and is what endows all matter with intrinsic artistic or aesthetic quality that is enhanced by human handiwork and heightened perception of awareness. There are many levels and categories to Dharma art. Art as everyday life is the first category and practice for those who are striving to recognize his or her cosmic essence. People do not usually think that washing dishes is a cosmic activity, but it is. The simple act of washing dishes brings into play the elements water, air, heat, fire, and earth, and represents the manifestation of our will and intention through an activity utilizing the hands. This is a fluid and alchemical process, dancing with cosmic elements and having cosmic elements dancing through us. We are always playing with cosmic elements. Failure to recognize this is due to minds that have made erroneous divisions in daily life forgetting that there is cosmic nature and value in everything. For example, sometimes the kitchen sink might look like chaos, but you clean and work for a while, then at a certain point order comes. We are always participating in this process. No matter what we do, we are always playing with elements to see how we can create order out of chaos. In this way, Dharma art is a perception of the moment-to-moment -moment cosmic process of order versus disorder, chaos versus design, and randomness versus intentionality. The practice of Dharma art requires us to exert to keep our senses open at all times, while performing all tasks, however seemingly mundane. Nothing is a chore. Everything is a cosmic process. For example, Making food is a cosmic process involving the transmutation and arrangement of elements, resulting in a creation of tastes that nurture the body. Every detail of daily life is an aspect of art. Every time you get up and make your bed and put on your clothes, you are participating in a process of going from one state of relative disorder to order, putting yourself together in a particular way so you are a walking sense of artful order, ready to perform your next cosmic function. The aesthetic codes are already encoded in our sense organs. The order of cosmic history is Dharma art, 
which relates to two internal structures symbolizing the path of means and the path of liberation, the yoga with form and the yoga without form. Dharma art is a form of yoga. The act of making a garden is a form of yoga, where the perceptions are utilized with skillful activity. This is a form of practice of a path with means. Everything that you do is the practice. Dharma art such as playing the flute is the refinement of the ability to coordinate the breath and feeling sensation with a practice. The more perfect the practice, the closer to God you are. You play so clearly that there is nothing left but the purity of the moment. The real question is, how close can you get to the source? We practice yoga for the refinement of the soul. How well can we control our body? How well can we synchronize our breath? How well can we synchronize our movements? When we are doing the asanas, our body is the ink brush and instrument that creates aesthetic forms. When a skill is mastered, ego is no longer, and there is God. Perceptual development is enhanced through activities such as drawing rocks or flower arranging. The point of Dharma art practice is to synchronize the perceptual with some form of manual skill, so that we are creating forms or structures that correspond to intrinsic harmony which is encoded into us. Art is the process of nature at a more conscious level. All artistic process should be an approximation of the self-organizing principle of nature.